U.S. and Japan issue joint warning on China-linked black tech hacking group. Pay to walk, Fuzhou pedestrian street roadblock fee debate. U.S. company agrees to pay $26 million SEC fine over Chinese bribery allegations. Research, China's hostage diplomacy distorts the geopolitical landscape. The mass disappearance of high-ranking Chinese officials highlights Xi's power instability. On September 28th, the U.S. National Security Agency, the FBI, and Japanese law enforcement collaborated to issue a cybersecurity advisory aimed at multinational corporations. According to Reuters, the warning is regarding a hacking group, Black Tech, with links to China. Japan's National Cybersecurity Center, the National Police Agency, and their American counterparts, including the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, the National Security Agency, and the FBI jointly produced the report. The statement reads, Black Tech has demonstrated capabilities in modifying router firmware without detection and exploiting routers' domain trust relationships to pivot from international subsidiaries to headquarters in Japan and the United States, which are the primary targets. According to Bloomberg, Black Tech's tactics involve infiltrating the internal networks of international subsidiaries and disabling logging to pivot stealthily towards the headquarters of targeted companies in the U.S. and Japan. The hacking group focuses on Windows, Linux, and FreeBSD operating systems, employing various remote access tools, malware, and techniques known as living off the land to avoid detection. Living off the land involves using legitimate tools in the victim's environment to blend in with normal operations. These warnings come against heightened tensions between the U.S. and China, particularly regarding issues like Taiwan. U.S. security officials have been increasingly vocal about their concerns regarding China's cyber attack capabilities. FBI Chief Chris Wray said earlier this month that China has a bigger hacking program than every other major nation combined. In May, cybersecurity authorities from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the U.S. jointly issued an advisory regarding China's state-sponsored cyber actors. Last month, the Washington Post reported that Chinese military hackers allegedly accessed Japan's classified defense networks in 2020. Despite this report, the Pentagon expressed confidence in sharing intelligence with Japan, a key ally in East Asia, as well as South Korea. Chinese authorities are trying every possible way to generate revenue. In Jiangxi's Fuzhou city, a pedestrian street toll has sparked anger among netizens. On September 23rd, a video circulating on mainland Chinese social media showed an incident on Wanchang Street in Fuzhou, Jiangxi. It showed that someone was openly blocking the road and collecting fees. An angry elderly man holding a phone confronted the fee collectors. There's no pandemic, no traffic accident. Why are you blocking the road here? Where does the money you collect go? Whose money are you collecting? The video quickly drew attention. Netizens mocked. Even the road has to charge fees. Facing questions from mainland media, the Wanchang Street office, responsible for the street, immediately shirked responsibility, saying that the street is only in their jurisdiction, but not under their management, as Fuzhou City Cultural and Tourism Investment oversees it. A reporter asked, If there's a fee, who would go to the pedestrian street for shopping? A staff member from the street office told him to call the Citizen Service Hotline for inquiries. Later, the Fuzhou City Cultural Tourism Investment Company also responded, claiming that the pedestrian street is in the Wenchangli Historical and Cultural District, where a large-scale cultural event is being held. Visitors need to buy tickets to enter and experience it. The road toll was a misunderstanding. However, many internet users still need to be satisfied with this explanation, believing that setting up checkpoints and enforcing fees on pedestrian streets considered public roads may violate the law. According to the U.S. financial regulator and advertising company, Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings has agreed to pay more than $26 million to settle its Chinese bribery allegations. Nikkei Asia reported that Clear Channel, through its Chinese subsidiary Clear Media, paid Chinese officials with gifts and used third-party consultants to win contracts to provide advertising in outdoor areas such as public bus shelters. 
According to the Secretaries and Exchange Commission statement, Clear Channel violated the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. The law passed in 1977 makes American individuals or entities liable for bribing foreign government officials to win or retain business. The SEC discovered that Clear Media bribed Chinese government officials from at least 2012 through 2017 to obtain concession contracts necessary to sell advertising services to clients in the public and private sectors for display on bus shelters, street furniture, and billboards. Besides, Clear Media used phony intermediaries and false invoices to generate cash for off-the-book consultants to obtain advertising business from government and private customers. Clear Media's principal executive officer from 2012 to 2019, identified as Executive A, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, subject to no advance review or approval, on government officials for first-class travel, hotel rooms, meals, and entertainment. Under a settlement with SEC, Clear Channel on September 28th agreed to pay $16.4 million related to the benefits it received from the alleged improper payments, almost $3.8 million in interest, and a $6 million penalty. Clear Channel held most of Clear Media's shares from 2005 through early 2020 when it sold the subsidiary for $253 million. Clear Channel said, Resolving these legacy matters is important to the company which believes this settlement is in the best interests of the company and its shareholders. It added, the company remains deeply committed to promoting a culture of ethical conduct and compliance. The Southfan Center, an independent consultancy based in New York, has published a special report titled Citizens for Leverage, shedding light on how authoritarian nations like China, Iran, and Russia are unlawfully detaining or abducting foreigners as bargaining tools or for diplomatic coercion. The report highlights that while data on hostage diplomacy from various countries is scarce, statistics from the James W. Foley Heritage Foundation in the United States indicate that in 2022, 79% of hostage diplomacy incidents occurred in China, Iran, Russia, and Venezuela. Moreover, due to concerns related to personal privacy or parties involved worrying that revealing international information, worrying that revealing internal information might complicate hostage release efforts, only 59 cases are currently known worldwide in which bail was granted. In July 2022, the Biden administration in the United States issued an executive order designating the arbitrary detention of U.S. citizens by foreign governments as a national emergency. The U.S. Department of State also introduced new risk indicators and travel warnings for six countries, China, Iran, Russia, North Korea, Venezuela, and Myanmar. However, despite these measures, the number of American citizens arbitrarily detained by other countries has increased 175 percent over the past decade. The special report underscores that China's arbitrary detention of foreign nationals have become more frequent in recent years and has increasingly targeted citizens of the U.S. and its allies. Such detention may be employed as a means of retaliation or to pressure these countries into compromising with China. The report cites cases such as the detention of at least 17 Japanese nationals in China following China's new national security law and counterintelligence law in 2014 and 2015. Additionally, the arrests of Canadian citizens Michael Kavrig and Michael Spavor on espionage charges in China in response to Canada's arrest of Huawei's then-chief financial officer Meng Wanzhou, as requested by the U.S., has garnered widespread attention. The report emphasizes that every incident of hostage diplomacy represents a human tragedy in which individuals become victims of power struggles between Beijing and foreign governments. The report made two recommendations after analyzing appropriate responses by the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom. First, governments of various countries should differentiate hostage diplomacy incidents from general consular matters, establish greater trust with the families of detainees, and collaborate with the early release of those involved. Second, instead of sacrificing hostages, a policy of deterrence and boycotting countries engaging in arbitrary detention should be applied to increase the costs for the nations practicing kidnapping. Such measures include imposing sanctions on human rights violators or individuals known for corruption through travel bans or asset confiscation. A series of disappearances of high-ranking Chinese officials has raised questions about the stability of Xi Jinping's power. Political commentator Deng Yuwen posted an article on VOA on September 24th saying that, in the past 10 years, not everyone in the core management team of the Chinese government was trusted by Xi, so power struggle rumors are often leaked out. At the 20th National Congress, Xi Jinping had complete control over personal affairs. 
He disposed former Prime Minister Li Kuxiang, Wang Yang, chairman of the National Committee of the Political Consultative Conference, and Hu Chuanhua, vice chairman of the Political Consultation Conference. The Politburo, the core power organ of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, and other key departments are all controlled by people she trusts. Under such circumstances, his management team should be very stable. However, just six months later, Foreign Minister Xin Gang and Defense Minister Li Shangfu suddenly disappeared and were suspected of being dismissed. The article surmises whether Xi's powerful group of confidants obeys him and is loyal to his leadership or whether Xi can unconditionally trust them needs to be carefully evaluated. The article analyzes the issue from three perspectives. First, after Xi Jinping was re-elected as General Secretary at the 20th National Congress, he did not transfer one or more of the multiple leading group positions he held to his trusted associates. This is probably because he worries about losing power and has no trust in his confidants. Second, Xi Jinping's path to achieving his goal by rejecting Deng Xiaoping's reform line is not recognized by the main body of the party and the government bureaucracy because the CCP bureaucracy is the group that benefits the most from reform and opening up. Under Xi's high political pressure, these officials have to implement his political line, but in their hearts they reject it, leading them to work passively and indifferently. This phenomenon of laziness and indulgence can be seen as a soft resistance to Xi's political power and policy. Therefore, although Xi can manipulate high-level officials, he cannot effectively manipulate middle- and lower-level officials to achieve his political goals. He cannot effectively control the overall situation. Third, the dismissal and replacement of Xin Gang and Li Shangfu seems to have nothing to do with the power struggle, but it cannot be ruled out that it was arranged in advance. This is a significant loss for Xi and shows he does not know people well. Although no one could challenge Xi's status, political opponents with the CCP may start with Xi's confidants to attack his image. The Xin Gang incident heralded a shift in this way of struggle. The article points out that the history of the CCP shows Xi cannot eliminate high-level political struggles within the party. The struggles exist invisibly between him and his opponents within the party and unfold among his confidants. As officials promoted by Xi, consecutive incidents involving Xin Gang and Li Shangfu will exasperate Xi's doubts about his trusted team. At the same time, it will strengthen Xi's surveillance to observe whether there is any disloyal behavior, creating more tension within Xi and his power team. This is what his political opponents want to achieve. Suppose China's economic situation worsens and social tensions increase in the future. In that case, the possibility of personal changes in Xi's power team cannot be ruled out. A mutual suspicion between him and his confidants will also increase. According to a BBC article, the disappearance of officials such as Xin Gang and Li Shangfu is a sign of instability in Xi Jinping's leadership. It quoted observers as saying that these incidents would create an atmosphere of fear in the PLA and the party. While this may be the desired result of better military discipline, it may also weaken military morale. Chong John In, a non-resident scholar at Carnegie, China, said since the Mao Zedong era, no other Chinese leader has rectified officials on a scale comparable to Xi's. It is estimated that since Xi launched the Hitting Tigers and Killing Flies campaign targeting both low- and high-ranking officials immediately after taking office in 2013, his anti-corruption campaign has caused thousands of officials to fall off the horse. In 2017, he targeted the PLA, investigating and sanctioning more than 100 high-ranking officers. Xinhua News said in an article that the number far exceeds the number of generals who died in the storm of bombs and bullets that created new China.